you want something done slowly, expensively, and possibly very well, you go to the British. While Britain created the immortal Spitfire, Lancaster, and Edgeley Optica, it also created a wealth of dangerous, disgraceful, and diabolic designs. These are just 10 plucked from a short list of 30. In defining worst, we've looked for one or a combination of the following. Design flaws, conceptual mistakes, being extremely dangerous, being unpleasant to fly or obsolete at the point of service entry. And the type must have entered service. Grab a cup of tea and prepare for ire as you read about 10 machines they wanted your dad, granddad or great granddad to fly to war. 10. Blackburn Beverly. The Beverly Hellbilly. A mere year separates the service entry of the Beverly, 1955, and the US C-130 Hercules, 1956. Yet 60 years later, one of these is still the best tactical transport, serving with many air forces around the world. And the other only exists in the form of a single lonely museum piece standing in the cold in a village near Hull. There's a reason for this. The Beverly had four Bristol Centaurus, capable of generating a total of 11,400 horsepower, pulling a fully loaded craft weighing 135,000 pounds. The C-130A had a maximum weight of 124,200 pounds and had 15,000 of turboprop horsepower to move it. The Centaurus also powered the abysmal firebrand, the pitiful Buckingham, and the technically brilliant but conceptually wrong-headed Brabazon, and also, for the sake of fairness, the Sea Fury. Lockheed threw vast resources at getting the Hercules right, so much so that Kelly Johnson thought the project would sink the company, whereas Blackburn used warmed-up World War II technology and a dawdling development time to produce an aircraft that was at best mediocre and which played its own small but important part in teaching the world that America was better at making aeroplanes. 9. Supermarine Scimitar Redbeard's Scabbard Take an aircraft so dangerous that statistically it is more likely than not to crash and arm it with a nuclear bomb. Prior to this, Ensure one example crashes and kills its first commanding officer in front of the press. And there you have the scimitar. Extremely maintenance heavy, an inferior fighter to the sea vixen, and a worse bomber than the buccaneer, the scimitar was certainly not Joe Smith's finest moment. It was the last FAA aircraft designed with an obsolete requirement to be able to make an unaccelerated carrier takeoff and as a result, had to have a thicker and larger wing. Only once did a scimitar ever make an unassisted takeoff, with a very light fuel load and no stores, and then just to prove that it could. 8. Panavia Tornado F Mark II The Timcat the Tornado Interceptor was a very British development of an international aircraft. In the 1970s, the British Aircraft Corporation pushed heavily for an interceptor variant of the Tornado, a ground attack aircraft. The government and partner nations were skeptical that this project would be the low-cost, low-risk, high-performance fighter promised. So BAC massaged the facts a little, deliberately understating what a huge undertaking it would be. Essentially, they took a heavy airframe optimized for low-level flight with engines optimized for low-level flight with a radar optimized for attacking ground targets from low-level flight and attempted to turn it into an interceptor intended to attack bombers at medium and high altitudes. To add to the fun, it was decided to develop an extremely ambitious new radar 
Despite Britain not having created an advanced fighter radar since the Lightning's 50s technology A123, the Sea Harrier's Blue Fox was a low-performance set derived from a helicopter system. Despite its F designation and the euphemistic interim description, the F Mark II did not have a functioning radar and lacked several other vital components for a modern fighter. The center of gravity issues caused by the absent radar was said to have been solved with a large chunk of concrete ballast, satirically dubbed the Blue Circle Radar, after a cement brand. Despite the tornado's terrible high-altitude performance and poor agility, huge amounts of money and time led to the F Mark III, which eventually matured into a capable weapon system. Quite how many F-15Cs could have been bought for the cost of the Tornado Air Defense Variant Program, however, is a question many RAF crews moan to themselves as they struggle to refuel at altitudes any higher than the post office tower. 7. Gloucester Javelin. It's not time for tea. It takes a special kind of genius to make an aircraft with a delta wing and one of the highest thrust-to-weight ratios of its generation subsonic. But that's what Gloucester did. The Javelin entered service in 1956, the same year as the dreadful Convair F-102, but even the disappointing American fighter would have smashed the Javelin in a drag race. After a mere 12 years in service, the RAF dropped the type. Unsurprisingly, no export orders were received for the Tripe Triangle. 6. Blackburn Firebrand Fleet Evil The story of the Firebrand torpedo fighter is a rotten one. The specification for the type was issued in 1939, but it was not until the closing weeks of the war that it began to enter service. Despite a luxuriously long development, it was an utter pig, with stability issues in all axes and a tendency to lethal stalls. There was a litany of restrictions to try and reduce the risks, including the banning of external tanks, but it still remained ineffective and dangerous to fly. Worse still, instead of trying to rectify the problems, the FAA started a witch hunt of those pilots who dared to speak the truth about the abysmal firebrand. Only two firebrand squadrons formed, of which the flying complement was heavily, if not entirely, made up of qualified flying instructors, suggesting only the most experienced pilots could be trusted with this unforgiving monster. 5. De Havilland Sea Vixen Vixen Vapor Rub The Royal Navy's Sea Vixen fighters were death traps. 145 Sea Vixens were built. Of these, 37.93% were lost over the type's 12-year operational life. More than half of the incidents were fatal. The Sea Vixen entered service in 1959, eight years after its first flight, two years later than the US Navy's Vought F-8 Crusader. The F-8 was more than twice as fast as the Sea Vixen, despite having 3,000 pounds less thrust. The development of the Sea Vixen had been glacial. The specification was issued in 1947, initially for an aircraft to serve both the FAA and the RAF. The DH-110 prototype first flew in 1951, and one crashed at Farnborough the following year. This slowed down the project which was then put on hold as DH and the RN focused on the alternative DH-116 Super Venom. Once the project became prioritized again, it was substantially redesigned to fully navalize it. Then, when the Royal Navy gave a firm commitment, it requested a radar with a bigger scanner and several other time-consuming modifications, all of which meant it arrived way too late. Its peer, the F-8, remained in frontline service until 2000. Its other contemporary, the F-4, 
remains in service today, and the Sea Vixen retired in 1972. 51 Royal Navy aircrew were killed flying it. 4. Saro Lerwick, Fat Boy Swim Despite possessing a decidedly cuddly aesthetic, the Lerwick was a killer, difficult to handle in the air or on the water, and a miserable combat aircraft. Recommended to be scrapped in 1939, the Lerwicks were pressed into service due to the lack of any other alternative. Of 21 built, 11 were lost, 10 in accidents, and one just disappeared. Its main problems were the old chestnuts of lack of power coupled with an inexplicable lack of stability. The Lerwick could not be flown hands off, a serious flaw for a long range patrol aircraft nor could it maintain height on one engine. It was prone to porpoising on landing and takeoff and possessed a vicious stall. Added to this structural concerns, the floats regularly broke off, and the woefully unreliable hydraulic system, and it is amazing that the diminishing number of Lerwicks managed to remain in use until the end of 1942. 3. Blackburn Botha Botheration. Another great Blackburn design, the Botha was damned from a chronic lack of power. Its poor performance meant it was never to enter service in its primary role as a torpedo bomber. Had that been all, it would have been nothing worse than an obscure mediocrity, but Blackburn had cleverly made it extremely difficult to actually see out of the aircraft, except dead ahead. This posed something of an issue for an aircraft now intended for reconnaissance, and the Botha was supplanted by the Anson, which it had originally been supposed to replace. Passed to training units, the Botha's vicious handling traits conspired with its underpowered nature to produce a fantastic amount of accidents. Yet somehow, it soldiered on until 1944 and a terrifying 580 were built. 2. Blackburn Rock Death Metal Rock The Rock was a fairly innocuous flying machine. However, as an example of the wrong concept applied to the wrong airframe to produce a useless combat aircraft, it is hard to beat. The turret fighter that was so inexplicably popular in Britain just before the war was most memorably realised in the Bolton Pull Defiant, an extremely well-designed machine, considering. That did surprisingly well, given it had to lag around a draggy, heavy turret to no good purpose. The rock, by contrast, was lumbered with a massively over-engineered airframe a legacy of its being derived from a dive bomber, had a less powerful engine and was over 100 mph slower. How an aircraft that could not attain 200 miles an hour was expected to survive, let alone fight, in 1940 is one of the enduring mysteries of the early war period, as is the fact that its only confirmed kill was a Junkers 88 one of the world's fastest bombers. 1. Blackburn, Twin Blackburn, or TB. The Conjoined Flip-Flop. Apparently named after a disease, the TB was a bad aircraft that could not perform the one task it was designed for and thus set a precedent for many Blackburn designs to come. The twin Blackburn nevertheless saw service for a year or so before it was finally put out of its misery and all nine examples were scrapped. Intended to destroy Zeppelins, the floatplane TB was supposed to climb above them and drop explosive Rankin darts on any insolent dirigibles foolish enough to approach its precious airspace. Unfortunately, the poor underpowered twin Blackburn 
was unable to drag itself to airship operating altitude, even after its deadly cargo of explosive darts had been cut by two-thirds. Furthermore, the structure, which consisted of nothing more complicated than a couple of BE-2 fuselages lashed together with a new set of wings and a vast amount of hope triumphing over experience, was not very rigid and the action of warping the wings flexed the poor TB so much it could end up turning in the opposite direction. The observer sat in one fuselage, the pilot in the other, and communication was impossible except through waving. Presumably to prevent either expressing to the other their true opinions of the designer of this radical machine. As if that were not enough, the wooden floats were mounted directly below the rotary engines. Rotaries drip out a lot of oil, and as a result, the TB's floats would often catch fire. It would be nice to say that despite all this, the TB inspired the fantastic twin Mustang, but of course, it didn't.